Thank you, Mr. Mule. And finally, we present Ralph Barridge and his gooses what lays them golden eggs. Hangy, hangy, ladies and gentlemen. Behold, here very eyes, as my half dozen of gooses does their world famous egg lions act. Gooses, do thy work. <laughs> now he never said it was interesting. But behold, they gooses have done lay them golden eggsies. Now, I should like to present a member of the audience with a very special Christmas gift of this fine golden egg. Who will it be? You! Who? Me? Yes, sir. You are the lucky winner. And here, here is your prize, sir. How exceedingly kind of you. Know we the secret of the golden egg, sir? I don't believe I do. I tell him that the goose's eggs of golden can be made a wish thereupon. All he has to do is to speak thy dearest wish. Put out this pin on top here and await three seconds at a safe distance from the public. But you must promise not to give yon egg away, for thy wish will work for he and he alone. I promise you, kind guano-infused yokel, and all your guano-producing geese, I shall treasure it always. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I must be on my way. Cheerio! Excuse me, sir. What's this? A cockney waif out alone in the snow on Christmas Eve in the middle of the countryside? That's right, sir. Oh, sir, I am but an humble cliché on the point of starving to death and all that malarkey. Won't a kind gent such as yourself give us a knicker for some booze for me dear old mum's art operation? I forgot me change for the bus and can't get back to poor me free and old nan who will starve to death if I don't go in with her dinner, which I've no readies to buy. Money! Give me some bloody money! Oh, you poor, shivering, prodigious thug. I'm afraid I don't have any cash on me now, so you'll just have to sod off. <laughs> However, I do have something of value. But I did just promise the kind Mr. Borridge and his geese that I would treasure it always. But how can I turn my back on this unfortunate bully? Should I give it to him, boys and girls? Well, I think I heard yes. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, your footpad. Although I have no money to give you, I do have this egg made from solid golden. Oh, yeah, that'll do. I'll just make my wish. May this tragic, young, over-familiar brigand be spared from future privation. Now I pull the pin on top. There you go, tiny hooligan. Now be off with you, or so help me, I'll... Give you the kicking of your life. Cheers, sucker! I think we all agreed that should happen, didn't we? <laughs> well, where am I now? Ah, a crude shopping arcade of rustic wares. Perhaps I should investigate. Hmm. No sign of mysterious goings on here. Ah, oh, look! A traditional Father Christmas, giving presents to the children of wary parents. My boy, my boy, what delights would you like to find in your stocking tomorrow morning? Great nasal stereotypes! A genuine Jewish caricature, circa 1864. And with all his original clichés. Such charming Yiddish workmanship. Uh, but tell me, my Romany septum one, why the mangy false beard and moth-eaten Saint Nick disguise? It's a hobby. Allow me to introduce Mrs. Claus, my wife. 
Hannah and my trio of elf helpers have three children, Isaac, Ishmael and Abraham. Oi, me! They're all going to be doctors, you know. How satisfying to have one's traditional prejudices confirmed. Hannah, my love, don't bore the good gentleman. I'm sure he has no interest in the domestic trivia of the Goldrings. Your name is... Goldring? All five of us, yes. But that would make you... the Goldring family. Yes, but everyone knows us as the... Five Goldrings! No, I never heard of you. Well, I must be going. Wait, wait, my boy. Come here. Take the weight off your wallet. Sit on Santa's lap and tell him what you'd like for Christmas. Why not? What could be more normal than one man sitting on another man's knee in public in 1950s Britain? <sighs> good, good. I'll just start the meat of running. <laughs> lovely. Lovely. Now, listen to me, Agent Strange Trousers. You're in terrible danger. How do you know me? I remember the plot from rehearsals. What's more, I too am an operative of MI5 and a quarter. Then why don't I know you? They made me a sleeper agent. Why is that? I hate getting up in the mornings, but that's not important right now. It's vital that you listen to me. I have information that could save your life. Everything that has happened so far revolves around Lord Even and Deepin Farms. Whatever you do, you mustn't. <laughs> Poison children with blow darts? Isaac, Ishmael, Abraham, no! Strange trousers, you mustn't. Shoot a woman with a high powered rifle with silencer attachment? Hannah, my darling, listen, strange trousers, under no circumstances can you. Operate a heavy machine gun in a public area without a license? Uh, no, well, yes. But moreover, you absolutely, and above all else, mustn't, under any circumstances, ever, oh. Die before revealing vital narrative exposition? That's the one. I mean, it's so corny. <laughs> what a tragic waste of almost human life. Still, these predictable family massacres do always seem to get the plot moving. So... <sighs> Strange trousers here. Blah, blah, blah. Deep end farms. You're going to die, even after, etc., etc. Damnation. This is the fourth time a woman's telephoned me today, and I haven't had a phone since scene seven. Blast these feminine distractions. Oh, tell me about it, Guff. You can never get a word in edgeways once the bird starts rabbiting on, can you? Birds, eh, hey, mate? And if they call you once, they'll call you two, three, four times. Always calling them birds. Four times. Calling you. Birds. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Tennyson, for that beautifully crafted 30-foot neon this hint. Wait. Four calling birds. But what could it mean? Until I find out, I'd better get to Lord Even and warn him there's danger afoot.